Hi, my name is Raymond Merritt. I'm an emergency medicine physician here in Tampa, Florida. And today for this video, I'm going to show you chest tube insertions. We'll talk about some of the indications, the complications, and some of the potential pitfalls that you may run into. So what are the real indications of doing this? Well, it's to evacuate any type of air or fluid from the chest cavity. And there's really two ways of doing it. And one is either through a needle insertion into the anterior chest, or two is through a traditional chest tube through the lateral chest wall. Now mind you, with some of the new technologies and new tubes that we have, they're a little bit interchangeable. But for this, we'll do the two traditional methods. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the chest wall itself. As you can tell anatomically, you have the midclavicular line. You wanna come down here to the second intercostal space, right down the midclavicular line. Obviously, don't go too medial, because you wanna avoid hitting the sternum and some of the mammary arteries, and don't come too lateral to avoid hitting the other structures of the body. From here, you palpate, find the clavicle, second midclavicular line, insert the needle. Once you insert the needle, you obviously feel a small whoosh of air. From here, we remove the needle, and now the procedure is complete. So let's go on to the second method of evacuating air or fluid from a chest tube. So this is the traditional chest tube method. And as you can see in this cadaver here, we've already done a few chest tube insertions. So we'll just slowly simulate as we insert. So as you can tell, the supplies that you need for the insertion is a chest tube, a Kelly clamp, a second clamp at the end of the chest tube itself, obviously a scissors, another clamp, and some suture material, and of course a scalpel. Now mind you, this procedure is generally pretty painful, so you should be in mind of either giving an anxiolytic or pain medication, IV, before proceeding. But another technique and or with it is to add a copious amounts of lidocaine. So before beginning, make sure you get verbal and written consent from the patient. If it's emergent, obviously proceed with the procedure. But you would like to have the patient in 30 to 6 degree angle, semi-fowlers, with the arm draped above the head, either taped down or with an assistant. From here, let's look at the anatomical landmarks before we start. Here you notice you have the mid axillary line. Here is the anterior axillary line. Here is the nipple. Typically, the nipple corresponds with rib four or five. Now, in people with different anatomical structures, previous surgery, that nipple may uh, change the landmark slightly, so it could be lower or higher. If in doubt, always go a little higher to avoid hitting anything into the abdominal cavity. So the first thing we'll do is once we get them placed is we'll insert the lidocaine. So by infusing the lidocaine here into this hole, we will inject all the way in and slowly aspirate. Now you wanna have the lidocaine in the syringe already. And of course with the lidocaine, always know the maximum dosages. If you use without, it's five milligrams per kilogram. For, for a maximum of this patient of 70 should be 280 milligrams, 380 milligrams. So from here, once you insert and you aspirate, you see bubbles. That's how you know you're in the pleural cavity. From there, slowly back out, then infuse. That should give a nice, large field block of lidocaine. Now wait a few minutes. It does take a few minutes for the lidocaine to set up. If you just now insert the tube, the patient may discomfort a lot of pain. The second step is to slowly dissect down with the scalpel. As you can tell in this cadaver, it's already been started and completed. So we'll slowly cut all the way down until we get to the pleural space. Now, once you start, if you meet a lot of large musculature or you hit breast tissue, you may be a little bit too close and start aiming posterior instead. Another method is to slowly dissect down with the Kelly clamps until you're at the pleura itself. You can also put your finger inside to feel for the pleural space. Once you feel that you're at the pleural space, hold the Kelly's on top of your index finger and slightly feel for the pleura. You actually will feel a pop or hear a pop sensation when you enter the chest, just like that. From here, you don't want to enter too deep with the Kelly's and open because the space will not open widely. Instead, slightly back out, then open. From here, you either hear a rush of air or potential fluid 
that's coming out of the body cavity. This is where having obviously your full PPE, including shoe covers, would be optimal. From this point on, first insert your finger and do a finger sweep in between both ribs, making sure that you can either A, feel a lung tissue, break up any adhesions, and most importantly, not hit any solid organs, indicating you're the abdominal cavity. I like to leave the finger in place so you know exactly where the hole is so you don't lose the hole itself. especially in some of the larger chest individuals. From here, slide the chest tube in, release the Kelly clamp, and the tip here also is to do a rotation of the chest tube, allowing it to slowly go in, so to avoid any sort of kinking. Once the chest tube is in place, you can release the clamp distally and attach to the pleurovac with the help of an assistant. Now, chest x-ray is the most definitive way of knowing the chest tube is in place. But here at the bedside, you can quickly have some indications. One is gonna be fluid coming out of the tube, or maybe some small areas of blood. Two, you will see fogging in the tube. Three, there may be increased or better respirations because of it, and more symmetrical expansion of the chest. The next thing we're gonna do is secure the tube. Now, there are many ways to do this, and I'm sure if you go on the internet, you will find multiple procedures, but I will show you one here. The procedure I like to do is to add a purse string technique. So we will start the superior portion. Come over to the other side. Now back around, making sure that the chest tube is in between the two sutures that you just placed. Now, once you definitely know you've gone all the way full circle, you do one more bite as close as you can, the entry of where you just last left off and where you began, right there. Now, it is important at this point you do not lock the suture down. From here, you want to cut off the needle so you don't end up accidentally sticking yourself. From here, you want to do one loop in a circle, another loop in a circle, and gently pull close together, surrounding the hole. The reason why you do not want to reverse and lock the suture down is because later on when the chest tube is removed, then they could simply remove the chest tube and then pull the sutures together and close the wound. By closing it rapidly, it'll decrease air from entering the wound, causing a pneumothorax afterwards. From here, it's a simple wrap around the chest tube. Once again, wrap one, wrap twice. When you do this second wrap, as much as you can, you want to cinch the tube slightly. By giving a small dent, it helps the suture to stay in place. Like so. 
from here you would put Vaseline gauze or some kind of impregnable membrane such as uh, petroleum jelly or Xeroform. Then of course a wide shape dressing on top of that and multiple areas of tape. I also would like to put one extra tape chevron here as well as towards the distal end where it attaches to the Pluravac. And from here, this ends the conclusion of the chest tube insertion.